Now, how do you review a game that comes with a controller? I mean, it's not like anyone who owns this bought it because they wanted the game. They wanted the new Wii Remote Plus, and this game happened to come with it. So basically, for a $10 tax on the price of a new controller, you got a game designed to show off its capabilities. And at least in theory, that's what this game is all about. Using the almost one-to-one -one motion recognition possible with this additional technology, it uses Motion Plus to deliver a more accurate control experience than possible with the original Wii Remote. And you know what? That's great. But you know what would be even more precise? A f***ing analog stick. This is Fling Smash for the Nintendo Wii. Released in 2010, Fling Smash was basically a bonus game bundled with the Wii Remote Plus, Nintendo's then new controller that had Motion Plus technology built in. You didn't have to attach the Motion Plus to the bottom of these new Wii Remotes as they had the extra sensitivity and accuracy right out of the box. But unfortunately, the technology doesn't make much of a difference in Fling Smash. In this case, even increased accuracy feels pretty inaccurate. So Fling Smash is a kind of action puzzle game. Playing as an unlikely spherical god, you move through scrolling levels filled with bricks. Bricks that must be smashed, hence the smash. You do that by flinging the remote, hence the... well, you know, hence the fling. The levels scroll by themselves, so the point of the game is to swing the remote in the direction you want your little smash blob to go. And this is where the advantages of the new Wii Remote come into play. Since the Wii Remote Plus, uh, or if you're still using it, the Wii Motion Plus attachment uh, is able to detect not only subtle movements, but also how you're holding the controller, the game can translate that information into accurate angles and directions. Again, this is all in theory. Well, the problem with Fling Smash, uh, or at least the first of its many problems, is that the problems inherent with Motion Plus ultimately hold down the game. The attachment requires regular calibration even in games with a lot less motion, let alone one in which, you know, swinging like a maniac is the core gameplay mechanic. So every few minutes, what started out as almost one-to-one -one motion deteriorates into some kind of Upside down, hey, I'm not holding it that way, crazy stew. Now, fortunately, you can recalibrate simply by pointing at the sensor bar, but frankly, that's still a poor workaround for what has always been a fundamental flaw of Motion Plus. In a game like this, that issue devolves from annoying into an almost game-breaking flaw. I mean, when accuracy is the whole point of the game and the controller, you know, forcing the player to compensate for inaccuracy kind of defeats the purpose. And while we're on the topic of problems inherent to the technology, there's also a disconnect between the motion and the movement. A swinging a remote to launch an on-screen character isn't a bad idea, but when there's no physical connection between the two, it's hard to know where the contact point is. I mean, when you hit a baseball in real life, you feel it. When you whack this little guy, you don't feel anything. I mean, except boredom. There are also some problems with the game itself. Uh, it tries to mix things up by adding collectibles and bonus levels, but the gameplay never evolves beyond the whole remote swinging thing. And as surprisingly unsatisfying as that is, it's also a bit too simple to hold your interest. There's also the lack of content, but it's hard to hold that against what is basically a $10 pack-in bonus. Of course, if the game worked better, this stuff wouldn't be as glaring an issue. Unfortunately, the game doesn't work better. The gameplay is boring, the multiplayer is messy, and even as a pack-in, Fling Smash just isn't very smashing. <laughs>